Welcome to episode number 121 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and today presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. And today, I think it's a, I believe it's a historic day because for the first time ever, maybe, we're having a New York Yankee on the show. Their fine catcher, Jose Trevino, is joining us. Yeah, you're all smiles and you should be. I think this is history. This is awesome. Yeah, this is great. I, I think the other day when I went to the studio was the first time they had a Yankee player show up too. Oh. So I got to try to get my boys. I got to try to get my boys to the studio. Okay, is it bad that I that I lied to you? It's not history that Zach Britton was on because he um, helped break down the lockout um, as a as a senior member of the players committee. I'm the first player of 2022 though. Yes, so it's yes. history. <laughs> that away, Jose. That's nice. The only thing is, man, I'm, I'm going to have to teach you how to set up your camera. You, half your forehead is cut off. Oh, I don't know. I mean, let me see. Is that better? Yeah, I, I wouldn't like be able to see far. that hair, man. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. But, you know, it's amazing because you get traded. You got traded, what, in March or something, right? Early March? I got I got traded two days before the season started. Yeah, so early Today, April. Well, I'd say I'd say three days. I think it was April second. Oh my god! And yeah. so people are like, "Okay, good defensive catcher." You have turned into this cult hero in this. Is it? <laughs> is it amazing what has transpired here in two months? Um, it's been it's been awesome. Like the the whole. I mean, I I know a lot of people say this, but like as a kid, you always want to play for the Yankees, and I think that was like. The biggest thing I was like, man, I'm gonna actually, I'm actually gonna play for the Yankees. You know, not many people get to play for the Yankees. Not many people get to wear the pinstripes for forever. You know, um, and it's been, it's been really awesome. My teammates have been unreal with me. The coaching staff has been great, and then the fans have been unbelievable. You know, they, um, they, they, they've definitely taken it, taken it easy on me. They, they, I feel like they, um, they got to know me a little bit which has been pretty good. Um, and it, it's just been, it's just been fun. It's been awesome. Are you staying in the city? No. Oh, you no. didn't want any part of that, huh? Well, I didn't know if I could handle it. Like I was like, I don't know if I want to deal with like, cause I have a truck, I have a big truck. So like, I was like, all right, I don't know if that's going to be good. So um, I actually, I got, I got lost my first day um, on the subway. So that's a that's a whole nother story. But, oh well, yeah. where where are we going? So, well, I, well, I was going to the stadium, and it was it was opening day, but they had canceled it because of the rain, and so I get on the I I follow the directions on 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 Google or on the iMaps, uh, whatever map it was, and I actually I get on the train that it said I was supposed to get on. Well, I get to like this one stop, and I think it's 134th. And I'm like, all right, like two more stops and I'm 161st and I'll walk out and I'll figure out where I need to go. So I'm sitting there for like two, three minutes and I'm like, this is a longer like pause on this train. And I'm looking around and like I have my AirPods in because like I don't want to like really like I don't want anybody to talk to me. I don't want to talk to anybody because I'm still like, all right, seeing some stuff on the subway has been a little weird. And um I I'm sitting there and I'm looking around and I'm like, there's nobody in here. I'm like, why isn't there anybody in here? So I just stay sitting down and the doors close. Nobody's in there and it starts going backwards. <laughs> so I'm like, Oh no. So I get out the next stop. I think it was like, I, I don't remember the stop, but I get out, get an Uber. And I'm like, Oof, good thing. I wasn't good thing. It wasn't opening day to day. Cause that would have been like, I would have freaked out. So then I ended up the next day. I ended up getting on the on the train and doing it like getting to one hundred sixty first and being like, all right, I uh, successfully tried the the subway. And then after that, I just started taking the subway everywhere. It's kind of easy now. So, like, do you have your own pass and everything? No, no, no. I don't. I don't have my own pass. I don't have my Come own. Come on, pass. dude. You, no. you you can't be a city boy unless you get one of your passes. Well, maybe maybe here in the next couple of weeks because I. Uh, I mean, I like I like taking it too. I don't mind it. Like it's it's cool. Do people know that you are the Yankees catcher? No, they don't. Well, no, no, no. I think. Oh well, there was just there was only one time that. I mean, I was eating. We were eating 
it was after I think like the opening opening week we went to go eat somewhere and like all these people kind of were like hey like go Yankees and I was like yeah go Yankees and they kind of like looked at me like we know who you are but we're not gonna tip you off here so it was it was cool but it's been it's been like it's been fun what do you think it would be like to be Aaron Judge in that city I I don't know the guy's amazing though man he's awesome Judgey is I mean, he's a superstar, man. He's everything about him is great. Everything's about him great. Serious balls to turn down 213 mil, bet on yourself, and then be like, yeah. Yeah, he's doing he's doing some good things. It's been I'm just glad I got a front row seat to it, man, because it's like the way he goes about his business, the way he goes about it on the field, off the field, like during the game, it's been it's it's a true professional. It's been it's been really cool to watch. See, that's the thing that I talk about all the time. It all started in spring training when you heard on opening day that he had turned down the money and he's betting on himself. To me, you are paying a premium for a guy, not only for the fact he's going to hit 40, 45 homers a year, whatever it is, but yeah. the dude handles New York so easily. Oh, Every yeah. time a microphone's in his face, I'm like, A+. plus. Yeah, yeah, he's been – it's been great. I mean, and like when I first got here, it was – it was like right away, like he just, he wanted to get to know me. He talked to me like, you know, and everything was going like we, we had a game in three or four days. We had opening day in three or four days. And I was getting to know the pitching staff, you know, getting to know the signs, getting to know my other teammates, the coach, like everybody getting to know everybody like, Oh, this guy does this, this guy does this. And he was there like, Hey man, if you need anything, like, let me know. Like, all right. So that's, that's always good to hear. New York. It's a different place, man. Now, yeah, we know not everybody's built for it. Um, yeah. You you know Joey Gallo better than most. Mm-hmm. You, know, you spent time with him in Texas. You have seen him when he's been at his best. Yeah. And now you have seen him struggle. Have there been times where you just had to go up to him and be like, yo, bro, you need to talk? No, man. I mean, Joey's – Joey's – Joey's Joey. He's going to do that. He's going to be fine. Uh, I'm not really, you know – I'm not really worried about Joey, man. He's going to be good. He's going to turn it up. Like, I have a I have a good feeling, you know, the work that he's putting in is starting to show a little bit, you know, and um, and he's, he takes a lot of pride in that stuff. And he's a, he's a great teammate. Like, he doesn't change. Whether he's struggling or doing good, like, he doesn't he, – he, he doesn't change. He's the same guy every day, every day in the clubhouse. He's like that big donkey out there, isn't he? He's so – he's he's, a, he's great, man. He's so funny. He's uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to be, you know, like you said, with Joey in Texas and, and Joey here. And, you know, Joey's just he's just a good dude, good ball player. And I'm excited to to see him turn it around. Is he goofy? He's a goofy, dude. He's a goofy, dude. Funny. He's a funny guy. man. What like, makes him funny, by the way? I mean, I've had some just, good conversations with him. Just everything, like everything in 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 baseball terms off the field. is fun. He's just. He's just a funny dude, man. He's got some quirks to him. So you uh, you paid a visit to the John Boy Media offices in Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. You are yeah. a legend there. Uh, <laughs> I was impressed with your stick handling on the floor ball against Jake. Do you what do you have a hockey background? I don't know about. No. Well, yeah, kind of, a little bit. Um, so growing up in South Texas, someone's like, "Oh, like, what do you mean? Why would you like hockey? You're from South Texas. Like, there's no snow down there." So we had a we had a hockey team. I think they were like minor leagues, AH, AHL maybe. Uh-huh. So they were just – and uh, they were in Corpus Christi and we would go watch them all the time. And I fell in love – I love hockey. Like I fell in love with the sport. Um, and it was fun. So like what I started doing was like my, my dad actually made me like some hockey sticks. So like he got he got the, the blade, which was a plastic blade, but like he had a piece of wood and he screwed it into it. And I would use that and I got rollerblades and I would just like in my front yard on the, on the sidewalk, I would just like move around with the, with with like a little ball, like a little wiffle ball and like shoot it at the door, like, and everything. And then my, I had a cousin, I had a cousin who loved, who loved it too. Like we just loved hockey. So we would just play, we were like seven, eight years old, just like playing and, and on rollerblades, loving it. And then I just, I got, I don't know. I liked it. And I, I keep following the sport, which is good. So, so are you a Dallas Stars guy, or since you got traded to New York, are you on the Rangers 
bandwagon right now? Where are we? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely on the Rangers bandwagon. Like, got to support, got to support that home team. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a Stars fan, uh, big Stars fan, big Jamie Ben, Tyler Sagan, uh, Radulov. Um, I like. Uh, I mean, we go down the list, man. I like all of them. Uh, and, and I lived in Dallas for three or four years, so I would in the off season I would just go to the hockey games. Like, so I'd go some of them. I went to by myself too, just to go watch. Yeah, yeah, I like I like hockey. I like the sport. Hockey's hockey's great. Even like PS five, like PS five, PS four. Like I have a hockey game. I love playing the hockey game. Yeah, you make your own. Do you create your own player? Yeah, 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 for sure. He's on the stars. Of course he is. What's the name of your player? <laughs> oh, it's, it's me. It's my oh, name. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, no nickname. Just well, just me out there, repping the jersey and, and going out there. And I'm a I'm a center. I'm a center. Are you tough guy though? Or are you just strictly one of those soft scoring centers? No, no, no. Like I, I'll, I'll fight. I'll fight. You will? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get into it. Oh, yeah. See, I'm yeah. a rare. I'm a rare created center. How? What are your demand? Are they physically similar to the real Jose Trevino, or did you make yourself like a giant? I just put the. I just put the standard. The standard size. <laughs> These dudes are huge though. They're big and they're tough. Like really, really tough. I think I think a couple of uh, I think I live close to a couple of Rangers guys too. I think I think I saw one of them and I was like, yeah, I think I recognize that guy, but I didn't want to be wrong. It kind of sucks that you can't grow out the playoff beard, right? But I can. Uh, yeah, you can. I can't. It's okay though. I got used to it. Yeah, I used to have. I mean, it was pretty big. Yeah, it was like, frothy. Yeah, it was big. But I I don't know. I kind of. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think I might go with a mustache soon. Oh no. You yeah. too? Yeah, I think I think all that lip thunder that all the guys are bringing in the dugout, I think I'm just going to have to have to join that party. Okay, so how do we how do we grade out? I mean, really the two best ones far and away are Nestor yeah, and Carpenter. Yeah. Like, I I think I I have a feeling I think Marwin's growing one out. I think Marvin Gonzalez is growing one out. Hmm. I think I saw that I think I saw that on his lip yesterday. He was he was kind of growing it out. And I think there's another there's another couple guys that are that are doing it. So this might be this might be a thing. This might be a thing soon. You know what? I gotta be honest with you. Like I itch all the time. And my beard's not like that dominant. I can't imagine what the hell it's like wearing a catcher's mask with a beard on. What a pain in the ass that sounds like. Yeah, well, actually I didn't I never knew how it felt with the smooth face. So I was like, oh. this feels kind of different. I kind of like this a little bit. Oh. So uh, yeah, it's it's not bad. We'll see. We'll see in the off season. We'll see in the off season what happens. What is? Can we get to the importance? That what does Mama think of it? She said she's gotten used to it. So she's she she said she had to go back and and look at pictures of like what I look like with the beard because <laughs> she's gotten so used to this. So, but she keeps saying like, "You and your son look just alike. Like y'all look just alike. Like, That's girl, funny. Now y'all look even more alike. You know." So I love that. It's cool. Today's episode of the Chris Rose Rotation presented to you by SeatGeek. I need you to follow some instructions. And don't worry, they're going to be beneficial for you. Take my word for it. Download the SeatGeek app on your phone. You'll scroll scroll through. You want to find your favorite baseball team. Uh, NBA Finals are going on. If you want to go to Boston or Golden State, we still have the hockey playoffs that are going on. You can purchase your NFL tickets a few months in advance as well. You want to go to a concert, whatever. They'll find your event. And then they will help you find the best seat in the house for the best money, the best value, right? They've got green dots and the green dots are good. The red dots, that means they're probably a little overpriced, not in your range, not what you want to do. So green, good, red, bad. In fact, they rate every ticket on a scale of zero to 10 to make sure that you are getting the best deal possible. On top of everything else, John Boy Media, Rose Rotation, we want to hook you up. So you go download the SeatGeek app once again on your phone. Use the code word ROSE. You're going to save 20 bucks off your first order. 20 bucks. So if you get a seat and it costs you $50, it's going to cost you 30 courtesy of the ROSE rotation. And who knows? Maybe you'll end up sitting next to me one day. Probably not because that would be a red dot. I want to circle back to your trip to John Boy Media headquarters. What was your impression of Jake and Jimmy? Uh... 
And by the way, you don't have to be nice to them just because they're the bosses. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I keep hearing. I keep hearing, hey, you don't need to be nice to these guys. No, Jimmy, Jimmy's great. Jake is great. Um, it's just it's pretty cool to see where they've come from. Like, it's 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 pretty cool because, I mean, when it first came out, like it was like, oh, these guys are, you know, like following baseball, like true baseball fans and putting out good information, you know. Um, and it's been it's been cool. But the studios I thought were cool. I, I give it like a year and that like the whole wall is going to be covered in like memorabilia stuff like yeah. signed jerseys I'm with you, you know funny things like that it's going to be really cool like I, I feel like when when teams come to New York they're going to be like man I need to go check out the John Boy studio you know like mm -hmm. I think it's going to be at like this time next year I think it'll be at that point good like, call pretty cool you yeah. could be like our tour guide like you could be um you could be like an intern for us and like you could yeah. be the, the guy that hosts people and brings them in yeah, for sure. Yeah. I can definitely do that. We'll pay for your subway pass. Well, I need to go. Well, yeah, I like that. And I'm, I plan on going to see the Empire State Building, too, like going to the top of it. So maybe maybe y'all can maybe we can throw that in there. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of that, too. Just save an need, expense receipt. They're, they're the best. I need, they, to see the, I need to see the Statue of Liberty, too. So let's work that in there. Wow. You really haven't done any of the touristy shit, have you? No, I've been I've been busy. <laughs> I have I have some things I need to do. Usually around seven o'clock at night. Usually, yeah, around one hundred sixty first, somewhere around there in that big the big stadium. It's a different place too. Like when you come in there as a visiting player. Oh yeah, yeah. Like when you hear when you hear as a visiting player when you hear shook ones playing. Oh, it's like oh dang! I know where I'm at, and you know you can feel the crowd like getting into it. And then when obviously you can take the field, like it's different. It's definitely different. Um, I like being on this side of it, you know, um, and the, the energy the crowd brings every night, like it doesn't matter if it's a win Wednesday night or Sunday night, like it's, it's, it's great. And you can tell they're passionate. They're passionate about their Yankees. They're passionate about baseball and they're passionate about winning. And that's, I mean, that's, that's what I love. You, you don't have to like the Yankees, but you got to respect the hell out of them. There's not one year where you ever go, do they really want to try and put the best team out there on the field? Because it's pretty simple. They, they go for yeah, it every definitely. year. That's all. Definitely. Uh, yeah. That wasn't your first career triple that you hit the other day over the Tiger center fielder's head, was it? Was that your first one? I think it was. Oh. Yeah. So, like, I, I actually, this is a funny story. But so, I joined this this campaign with Kyle Gibson last year. Um it's it's dealing with uh, Adam Wainwright's mm -hmm. um, charity. It's called Big League Impact. Right. And uh, so last year I was gonna do like uh, you do like a certain dollar amount for like hits, uh, doubles, triples, home runs, uh, just like extra base hits, and you could put like a different dollar amount to them. So like a uh, a double's worth you know fifty dollars, and you donate that at the end of the year for every double you get, or like a home run is worth a hundred. And you donate that for every year at the end of the year, however much that is. Well, I was going to put like, I was going to put like a ridiculous amount on, uh, on triples last year. And I had told Kyle Gibson, I was like, dude, I'm just going to put like, you know, let's put like a thousand dollars, like 1500 on those triples. I don't know if I ever get one. So I end up playing against San Diego last year and I hit like a ball to center field. I think Grisham's running in and it like takes like a funny, like knuckleball and dips down and goes to the wall. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm about to get a triple here. And then all of a sudden, you know, my, my wheels didn't turn fast enough. And I got to second base and I was like, oh, I'm not going to go. <laughs> and so I threw the ball in. And then the other day when I hit that, when I hit it over the center fielder's head, I was rounding first base and I was like, oh, dude, I'm going to hit a triple here. Like, I'm, I'm going for it. And sure enough, like I touched second. I'm like, I'm moving. I'm going. So. How tired we'll were see, you? Uh, I wasn't that tired. Honestly, I, 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 it's, 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 I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say, yeah, I wasn't that tired. I wasn't okay. That tired. Yeah. No, you look like you were moving pretty good, you know, cause there's some yeah, catchers that are like, season. I want to see, um, you know, I know Williams Ostadio doesn't play catcher much anymore, but you know, I love watching that dude run. That is, he was last night, last yeah. night, I think they had a walk off in Miami and he was running oh, yeah. down the base pass, man. That dude gets down the line. He gets yeah. down the line. He can run a little bit. Yeah, he can. I mean, it's it's he and like Alejandro Kirk, like yeah. that dude's. You know, they're bringing the the big 
body catcher back. Like enough of the guys who are chiseled and shit. <laughs> the old, I want like the fat guys back there again. You know, can we? Yeah, those dudes are they're talented, talented players, man. Talented players. Fun. That's for sure. Hey, one of the cool things that you did this year, you had your a walk off, and mm-hmm. it happened to fall on what would have been your father's birthday. Yeah. And you lost your father eight years 2000 ago? 2013. Okay, so yeah, nine years ago. 2013, yeah. And it was very emotional for you. Um, and as somebody who has lost both parents, I, I identified with that entire interview that you had. What do you miss most about your dad? Oh, man. Um, the conversations, uh, the conversations we were starting to have wasn't like a uh it wasn't like a father and son it was like a man to man like we were starting to get man to man conversations um and they and they were fun they were funny my dad was hilarious man my dad i i think i i i i always say this but i think like when i look at my son now i see my dad because mm. my dad was so funny and my son's hilarious like my dad used to he used to like try on all these hats and different hats and like some anything funny to get a laugh out of anybody. My dad was doing it. And that's the way my son is. Like whether my son starts dancing or putting on a hat or like acting funny or acting silly, like my son is doing that like naturally. You know, you don't have to tell him like, hey, like, like smart. Like, no, he's like putting it on and like making a funny face. So it's I, I think I think that's what. uh it's probably what I miss the most is like the conversations we were starting to have um, around my age, you know, as a young, as a young, as a young man, like getting into the manhood, like it was, I think those are the conversations. Um, And then obviously like I knew, I, I I knew how bad he wanted me to be a Yankee Mm. and I knew how happy he would be like to see me in Yankee stadium in a Yankee uniform, like, I, I know how happy that would uh, that would have made him, but he's got a good seat. He's got a good seat now, um, and I'm sure he's enjoying it. Um, but it's yeah, the the, the conversations, uh, and then obviously him him being there because he always found a way to take off the edge, man. Like, yeah, he would teach me the lessons of baseball and of life, but like if he knew, he he just had this, like, he just had this way of knowing, like if it was if if I was, you know, feeling too much pressure or like feeling this, like he knew how to like relax and and make me calm and be like, Hey man, like take it easy. You're, you're good. Like he, and he'd always tell me like, yeah, you're a good baseball player. You're a good baseball player. So he's like, you don't need to feel no pressure. Um, But yeah, he, he was, he was a good man. He, uh, he taught me a lot and he all, he, he always taught me, he's like, I don't care what, what anybody says about you as a baseball player, I want them to to realize that you're a good person and and you help, um, and you and and baseball comes second, you know, and, and you got to be a good person first. So he taught me a lot about that. It's a hell of a tribute to him, man. Yeah, it was, dude. It was unreal. Like, like I, I mean, Father's Day, my son was five days old. Like, that was like, that was crazy. But this one. Like, I don't know if they have film of it, but me walk like I was pacing in the dugout, like, get me up to bat. It's over. Like, I will, I'll be, we'll be good. Like, I, I know I got a little extra help, you know, feeling good. Like, I, I know I can do this. Like, I was just pacing back and forth, waiting for my, and then I was like, all right, Izzy got on, Marwin got on. I was like, let's roll. We're good. Let's go. So, in, in between first and second, you were looking at the sky. What'd you say? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I, I, at that point, I was just like when I, when I touched first base, I had already like, again, like I, I was basically looking up like, dude, again, like you did this again, like you did it on Father's Day. You didn't have to do it today too, but like, I don't know. It was, um, it was, it was, yeah, and like the the. I, I, I think I, I think someone was like, you know, like you can tell, you know, that meant a lot to me. Um, 
and yeah, it, it really did. It meant, it meant a lot. Like, obviously, we won the game. It was a walk-off on my dad's birthday, you know. And obviously, all the stuff that was going down in, in, in South Texas with the, with the school shooting, like, yeah, that was all on my mind. But, like, it was, like, I don't know. Like, it's crazy that these things happen on these days when my dad is, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, for me, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big spiritual guy. Like, I believe I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Catholic. Um, I believe in angels. I believe in saints. And like, like every single time, like something like that has happened. Like I've, I've never felt overwhelmed. I've always felt like this, like calming sense of being like, like, all right, just go out there and, and give it your best. And like that, like every time that comes to my mind, every time something like a big situation like that comes to my mind, that that's so what my dad used to teach me. He's like, He's like, he, and he always used to tell me, he's like, Hey man, like you're not going to succeed in all these, like all these situations. You're not going to succeed. Like I'm telling he's telling me like, you're not going to succeed in all of them. He's like, but what you can do is prepare for them and be ready for them. And if you do succeed, great. If you don't learn from it, because you're going to have another chance at it, you know? And, and my dad was really smart in those, in, in terms of, of using his words and letting me know like, Hey man, like, I felt like at a young age, he was telling me like, Hey, you're going to fail a lot. But like, I didn't realize it because he made me feel so comfortable being like, okay, I can learn from it though. Like he always used the word learn. Like you can learn from this. If you, if you mess it up, you can learn from it. Like it's not the end of the world. And I think at a young age, he really instilled that into me and like it's carried on through everything. It's pretty good parenting. I gotta be honest with you as a father of two boys <laughs> that are 21 and 16, that's pretty yeah your pops did it man it's good yeah he did it's good yeah um, i miss listen i there's not a day i don't miss both my parents it's it's hard and as your kids get older because i know that you guys are having another one soon yeah you know like it sucks that my parents are missing all this cool shit my kids are doing like that's what yeah. you wanted them to see like you it's like yeah they're proud of you and then you want them to be proud of the kids that you've raised like it's yeah for and, sure yeah, yeah. My, my son just started t-ball and like my dad would have had a blast with the kids. oh yeah like he would have he would have been like i i don't know it would have been uh it would have definitely been a fun sight but like you can tell like my little one is just like you know silly funny mm -hmm. just like my dad just so like that, my dad his name's josiah right yeah josiah cruz yeah and yeah. he was born – wasn't he born right before you got called up to the show? Yeah, five, day, five days before. June 10th, tomorrow's his birthday, his fourth birthday. So he's going to have a Sonic, Sonic birthday party tomorrow. So That's big yeah. league. Nice. Yeah. Oh, man. It's good stuff. Hey, baseball fans. It's time to step up to the plate with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. New customers can bet just $5 on any game and get $150 in free bets no matter what, win or lose. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday this baseball season? With DraftKings Same Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, total runs, extra innings, and more. And boom, you have a shot at an even bigger payout. I mean, take Lucas Giolito, 5Ks over six innings, next start. It excites me. I love it, you know, not just because he's a co-host. Uh, but right now, if your same game parlay doesn't hit, you can get a free bet back up to $10. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSE. New customers can make any $5 MLB bet and get $150 in free bets no matter what. That's promo code ROSE only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. MLB trademarks used with permission. Catching behind the plate, do you have good interaction with, the, with other players? Like, I mean, because you're a good talker, you're a good dude. Are you one of those guys that, I mean, do you, chop it up with if, guys or no if if people want to talk they want to talk i understand like some guys just want to be focused uh and get in the box and, and handle their business and some of the guys like it, i feel like talking relaxes them 
like, like seriously, like I feel like you're talking to somebody like, Ooh, like, okay. Like, Hey, what's up? Like, how's it going? Everything going good? Like, yeah, good. And they step in the box and they, and they get out and, you know, like maybe they make a joke about a pitch, like they didn't see or something like that, but it's, you, you definitely have some different interactions as for like guys like Ty France, like me and Ty France will have a whole conversation throughout his whole at bat. Really? Yeah. Like I, I, I came up playing against Ty. So we, I mean, we just talking and, and, and following each other on Instagram, following each other's lives and stuff. And, you know, it's been, uh, it's been pretty cool. Like him, uh, Fran Mill Reyes is another one, like playing, playing against all these guys and actually like seeing everybody like, it, it, it's pretty cool because you see everybody's journey, man. Like being in the big leagues, like you see the guys that you play against and you, you almost like, I'm not going to say you become fans of them, but like fans of their journey. I would say like, you're like, man, I, I remember when this guy wasn't doing too well in double a. And now all of a sudden this dude's in the big leagues hitting homers and people love him. Like, that's great. Like good for him. You know, like that's, that's awesome. And it, it's really cool to see like a lot of guys around the league, a lot of guys around the league, like, it's been it's been pretty cool, but yeah, you you have some conversations with some guys, other guys like, you know, most of the time I just try to keep it real simple, like, hey, how's it going? Mm-hmm. And yeah, hey, yeah, stay healthy this year. Um, but if like Albert Pujols steps in, I I get a little nervous sometimes around Albert Pujols. And oh yeah, how did I mean? Yeah, you... he's he's one of I mean he's my like my favorite player. Did you tell so, him that? like? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I was – well, not at first. I was really nervous to – I just said, hey – I think I said, hey, Mr. Pujols, but we're not going to – we won't get that far. But uh, uh, one of our catching coaches, in, uh, uh, Bobby Wilson in Texas, was like, dude, you got to talk to him. You got to talk to him. So I was like, man, all right. You know what? Tonight I'm going to hit a single, and I'm going to get on first base, and I'm going to ask him to sign a jersey for me that I bought like two years ago, and I haven't mustered up the courage to ask him to sign it. And they're like, dude, he's a nice guy. Like, just do it. And I'm like, man, but, like, it's crazy. Like, that's my idol. Like, you know, crazy. So, and he ends up coming up in the first inning. I just say, hey, how's it going? Like, that's it. Like, I was like, ooh, a little nervous. And then uh, I finally, I get up to hit, and I hit the single, and I get to first base, and I'm like, dude, Albert, like, you're one of my favorite players of all time, man. Like, is there any way you can, like, sign a jersey for me? And he's like, dude, yeah, of course. Like, you got the jersey here? And I'm like, yeah, I've had it for, like, two years. I just haven't asked you. And he started laughing. He's like, yeah, man, just send it on over. I'll sign it for you. And, like, put my full, my full first and last name and, like, signed it. Cardinals jersey. So, it was – it's really, really cool. Like, super cool. I wish you could see the smile on your face right now. It's like you're eight years old. I, I, that's what I felt like. Like, that's what I felt. I mean, this was the guy, like – coming up like everybody had their hands like this because he was hitting like that like everybody on my high school team was hitting like that so yeah like um it, it, it's been pretty cool like him and, and Derek Jeter like are top like top top and like right below them is like you know Yachty like yeah I will get to see Yachty this year um I don't know what I don't know what words are going to come out of my mouth when I see him I'm probably going to have him sign a jersey too you better but, yeah, for sure. For well, sure. Well, <clears throat> if you're lucky enough, maybe you guys are blowing them out and he gets on the mound. Have you watched him pitch? He did it again last I, night. I did. I saw him I saw him last night. I saw him throwing last night. And I don't know. I want to see him and I if, I want to see him air it out just one time. For sure. I think that would be that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Who would you rather face on the mound? Because both Pujols and Yachty have thrown this year. You have one at bat, only one at bat. Who are you going to try and hit off of? Pujols. Yeah. yeah. Pujols for sure. I think I mean, that would be – that'd be cool. How cool for the cool. two Giants who homered off of him this year? Like, I'm yeah. sorry, there's not a lot of people walking around the planet who say that they can homer off a guy who's got almost 700 career home runs. Did did they did someone ask for the ball back? One I of the think, Giants players. I don't know. Yeah, I imagine maybe. so. Maybe I don't know if I I don't know if I heard that. I gotta I gotta check that out. But I think that would, I think that would have been pretty cool. Like oh yeah 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 you're homer, right. Like yeah, our producer Rob Scirocco mentioned it was Evan Longoria who got who just got a hit, not a home run. <laughs> and Longoria yeah. asked for the ball. He was like, hell yes, I'm gonna ask for the ball. Yeah, pretty cool. That's what, uh, 
I did that. I did that in in, in L.A. against Kershaw. Um, yeah. I, well, I I know I used to, I caught a couple bullpens for Kershaw one time when I was like in Double A. Uh, I caught like three or four bullpens. Like passionate dude. Like that's I'm a big fan of that guy too. That guy's awesome. But uh, we went to L.A. and like the I think a couple springs before I I had asked one of the guys to ask him if he'd sign a jersey for me like as a thank you, and like he like really cool, like wrote on the Jersey and everything like, Hey man, like, you know, Clayton Kershaw, Cy Young, you know, all that stuff. And then he put like, can't looking forward to getting you out soon. So I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Like, you know, and sure enough, like first AB, he punches me. Like I look silly up there. And then second at bat, I get one of his, one of his curveballs and I just like cap it on the end, like over third base. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> give me that ball. Let me get that ball. Like I was like, I need that ball. And everybody's like, all right. So sure enough, like first base coach was like, hey, let's get that ball. And everybody's like, is that like his first hit or something? And I'm like, dude, not many people get to hit, you know, get to get a hit off Cy Young winners, you know, Hall of Famers. So I got I got one of I got that ball at home too. So when you so you caught him probably in the Dallas area during yeah. an off season yeah. or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Dallas, so you're in, in off season. You're in Double A at the time. You're probably in your early twenties, dude. I it was probably the like the most intense bullpen. Like it was, like it was it was impressive. I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from him. Were you nervous catching him? <sighs> yeah, I didn't. So I had got asked. This is how it went down. I was at I was at the Rangers. Like I think it was like mini camp in January, like a winter camp. And they had came up to me and they were like, hey, there's these guys that need to throw. Um, and they're looking for a catcher. They don't have a catcher. Um, and they're looking to like, you know, they're looking to throw. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I had no clue. And then finally I was like, well, who is it? And they're like, oh, well, we don't know yet for sure, but you'll see when you get there. So, like, they didn't tell me who it was. So I, I, get, to the, I get to this place and I'm, I'm parked there and it's getting close to that time and i'm like man i gotta stretch out like who knows who i'm catching like i have no clue so i get off the car and i'm walking up to the gym and up pulls this tall six foot ten maybe eleven right-handed pitcher chris young how tall is chris young yeah he's chris young, six, he's six ten yeah so he pulls up and i'm like that's chris young like it's a big leaguer, which was my, you know, assistant GM, like a right. couple months ago. So I was like, holy crap, like Chris Young, like, oh, what's up? Like I shook his hand. Great dude. Like started talking, pitching and stuff. Um, and then I get in the gym, I get in the facility, stretching out, warming up and in walks in, in walks in you Darvish. So I, I knew you Darvish uh, from catching him in Texas a little bit. On the minor league side, he would throw, you know, bullpens or, like, spring training game. I caught him a couple times. So, he walks in, and I'm like, damn, like, I guess I'm catching some dudes today. And, like, the door is, like, halfway open in this facility, and you just hear, like, beep, 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 like, you hear a honk. And sure enough, like, it's a Yukon suburban, like, driving up, and I'm like, yo, that's Clayton Kershaw. Like, and I'm looking like, yeah, that's definitely Clayton Kershaw. All right, I'm, I'm definitely catching these guys today. Like, wow, what a, what a rotation to catch, like, in the offseason. Like, hey, you're going to go catch Chris Young, you Darvish, and Clayton Kershaw for a day. Like, go get them. And I was like, all right. So, I mean, I went there and, and caught them. And then, like, every, I think, Tuesday or Thursday or something like that for the rest of the offseason, I was going there and catching their bullpens. So, I heard he's got a decent curveball. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. First time, first time he threw it to me, I kind of was like, oh, whoa, that was, that's definitely different. <laughs> Dude, but, I'm sorry. That's yeah. even though that's what you do for a living, that's one of those I would call my friends afterward and I'd be like, Dude, I just caught Clayton Kershaw's. Board. I did. Yeah, good. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I, I called one of my, I was like, Dude, y'all never guess who I caught today. And everybody was like, Who? I was like, And I caught, and I told him Chris Young. You Darvish, and they're like, "Oh, that's awesome, man!" And I was like, "In Clayton Kershaw," and everybody's like, "What? Are you kidding me?" So, yeah, it's pretty cool, dude. You've got a lot of good welcome to the show moments. One other is there I, another one you want to share? You got any good Oof. ones? Um, 
No, I mean, some of my favorites have been here with the Yankees. Really? Like, be, yeah, like being in the clubhouse with these guys have been has been awesome, man. Like, there's so much good information, like, from these guys that have done it for a long time. Um, like, a lot of the guys on the team are just so smart, man. Like, the way they go about the game, the way they go about their business. Who's, the smarter, their who's business. smarter than we think they are? Oof. No, I think everybody has – I mean – there's a, I, I've all like, I couldn't pick anybody. Like you can see, I mean, the way, the way, the way Garrett goes about his business is like impressive, man. It's impressive. Like it's been fun to learn from him. And like, I, I feel like it's everybody, everybody's so into like what, what we're doing here on this team. Like, it's good. It's a good, it's good for our culture. It's good for our team. Good for our clubhouse. Like everybody's so in tune with what they're doing. And the good thing is like, everybody comes in, everybody knows what their job is to do. So we just try to do our job the best we can. Hey, quick reminder that if you want to tune in live to baseball today, all you have to do is download the amp app on your iPhone. You can talk to us every Monday through Friday, 1130 AM Eastern. It's an hour long so about halfway through, you'll get to ask us questions, give us your comments, your concerns about your favorite baseball players or teams out there. Go download the AMP app. Use the code word baseball today. We'll see you Monday through Friday. Well, you guys are very professional. And there's two things I want to hit on very quickly. One is the, the Cleveland incident where the fans started throwing the stuff on the field. I, yeah. you know, Austin Hedges is a regular on the show and he could not say enough good things about you guys as players. Yeah. How important it was for you guys to get out there. Like we saw Judge and Stanton and Gallo all leading the charge. And believe me, any motherfucker is going to stop what they're doing in a second when those two <laughs> guys show up to the party. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We talked about how important it was that you guys were like, listen, dude, we just won the game. Go celebrate, but stop that shit. I don't care what Miles yeah. Straw did with the one fan. and it, The rest of it doesn't matter. How important was that for yeah. you guys to show you had their backs? I was still new. Like I was still new. I didn't and and I was down in the in the tunnel getting ready. So I had no clue what would happen. I just knew that we walked them off. And I was as I was like coming out of the steps, I saw like running in the right field. I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm going out there too. And then you kind of see like Judge Stanton, like, and then Gallo, everybody's like, hey, yo, like, no, like, don't like stop. And then you I mean, you see stuff coming on the field, but but def I mean, that was like I don't know, man. It just tells you a lot about the dudes in the clubhouse, like mm -hmm. looking out for for the other guys too, which is, is pretty cool. And then the other thing was obviously the Donaldson incident, which could have gone sideways, I think, for this team. And in fact, Josh came out recently and he said, you know, it was tough for me because I heard Aaron Boone come out and say what he said and Aaron Judge say what he said about how, you know, don't use that those words. I mean, have you guys kind of all talked it out? Was there a, a meeting yeah, no, I mean, it's all – we talked it out as a team. Everything is good. Like, we handled it all um, internally, um, and it's been it's been good. And, like, the way everybody's handled it, it's been good. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's smart. You're going to have shit like that happen. It just does. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, you are the uh, crazy slide artist based on an amazing move at home plate recently where you had a little fun out there on social media too. I always get worried sometimes when dudes come in like super speed. Here we go. Hey man, did you know you had it in you? I knew I had something, but like, it, it was definitely like, I, I, uh, the whole play, I, I messed up on that play. It's a bad read. If you're looking at base running, don't look at that. Like that's not a good play on my part. <laughs> I was supposed I was supposed to do something else that I wasn't supposed to do, but I was supposed to do this. Anyways, it was a bad read on my part, but um, I started. I kind of like as the play developed, I was looking at it and I was running in and I was like, okay, Stash is in front of the plate, like, and the throw's taking him towards me. So I said, I'm just gonna stay on him as long as I can, like forward, because I know if he catches the ball coming towards me, he's gonna reach out and try to tag me. So like. I'm running straight at him and he catches the ball and I'm still running straight at him. And as soon as I see him kind of like go like this, that's when I was like, all right, I'm just going to move to the side and hopefully I get around him. 
And when I went like that, I didn't feel him. I was like, oh, dang, he didn't touch me. So that's when I just kind of like went back and touched home plate. And I thought he was going to call me out. That's why I was kind of like pointing to the dugout. I was like, he didn't touch me. So that's kind of how that play went. I uh, I got super lucky, though. Good super move, lucky. Man. Look at him. Yeah. Look at them quick hips right there. That's some yeah. serious agility. Yeah. I I, I, uh, I got to credit spike ball for that. I played a lot of spike ball in the off season. <laughs> so I'll credit, I'll credit that to that. Spike ball. I got to ask every catcher about pitch com. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Two thumbs up. Man, I can't find one guy who doesn't like the service. I love it. I love it. Like, I think it's, I think it's great. Who does the voice for you guys? I think we have robot voice. It's a robot oh, voice. that's boring. Yeah. Yeah, no. no, we had. I'm. They asked if well, when I was in Texas, we were gonna do like our voices, but I think that would have been weird hearing my own voice. Like, I don't like to hear myself talk, anyways. Yeah, so I think it's weird. No, you got a good so, voice, like, solid. Yeah, yeah, but I, I just think it's it sounds funny, so I wouldn't want to hear myself calling pitches and being like, "Hey, down, like throw this down here, like spike it, or like." chase or i don't know anything like that like i feel like that would wait be is weird, there a so. spike button i don't know we can make one up <laughs> oh see i like that yeah, yeah. really change it i up. think I'm, I'm pretty sure you can program it however you want like you so, can do buttons like for anything and everything yeah if you know austin hedges a little bit yeah i love him he digs himself he's hilarious yeah <laughs> so he of course is the voice for cleveland's pitch con and he oh, has a, awesome he has a special button that if the guy throws a great pitch, you hit it, and it's just him saying, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, see, you can program it however you want. Yeah. That's that's great. Who's I got the, have to look into get who's got the best voice on the team that we think should actually do it? You know, who's got like that Morgan Freeman identifiable voice? Ooh. Let's get Wandy Peralta to do it. Really? I <laughs> I think I've heard one word out of Wani Peralta's mouth ever. The guy's hilarious. Good tone. He's one of the, fun, one of the funniest dudes. But he, really? he, so if you look at him when he comes in from the bullpen, he's singing like his, his song. So like he's like up there warming up, like singing his song. It's great. I love it. He's great, man. That guy's, that guy's hilarious. Funny dude. Funny have you, dude. Have, have you ever in your time ever had an incident where you're talking to a guy on the mound and it's gotten heated? Like you're trying to get him to a level where he needs to go. Cause you know, yes. you play every role back there behind the plate. Yeah. My buddy, uh, my buddy, Taylor Hearn. Taylor Hearn. He's the sweetest kid ever. He's a great dude, but we, uh, I don't remember where it was, but yeah, we, uh, we got a little heat at each other there. What happened one time? I honestly, I don't remember. I can't remember the situation right now. But I know we were on the road, and it might have been against New York. I don't remember. I don't remember who it was against, but I, I know we were on the road. But, yeah, we were, like, trying to discuss something, and it just got, like – and then finally we were just like, all right, let's go. Like, let's just do this. I think he ended up, like, punching out, like, two dudes, too. Hmm. Like, big situation. So, sometimes it works. Is there an apology afterward? Like, hey, I think from both people, that. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, heat of the moment, man. Mm, spicy. Competition. Right. Uh, I'm going to spin the wheel of moderately interesting things here. And, oh, nice. Um, Let's do this. Yeah, and then we'll get you on your way. Ah, this is good. Meet and greet. How'd you beat your wife? Oh, man. Uh, we were... This is great. I love this. This is a great story. Um, so I was coming off of the fall league and I was like thinking I was Mr. Hot Stuff. Um, and, uh, my mom had invited me to a family, a family friend's birthday party. Well, the family friend was her sister and everybody like kind of knew each other and everybody, my, my mom kept on me. She said, Hey, you gotta meet this girl. You gotta meet this girl. You know, I, I don't remember if my mom said like she's so beautiful she's a model or she could be a model. I, I don't remember. I just remember saying like she's really beautiful. I'm like, oh yeah, like 
okay, cool, like awesome, sweet. It's like, you need to come to this birthday party. You need to come say hello to like everybody in the family and the friends and stuff. And I was like, mom, I'm not going. I'm gonna go with my friend. We're gonna go do something else. Like, I'm not going, I'm not going. Finally, I was like, all right, I'll, all right, I'll go. Like, I'll, I'm just gonna go for a little bit and I'm gonna leave. Like, I'm only gonna go for like an hour. So well, I end up getting to, getting to the birthday party and I'm there hanging out. Um, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, where's this girl that they're talking about that I need to meet? Like, I know that's why they wanted me to come here. Like, all right, like, I want to meet her. And like, sure enough, like, I see someone walk by and I'm like, whoa, who is that? And sure enough, it's, it's her. And um, she was kind of far. So like, you couldn't. You could really, you could tell how beautiful she was. You could tell, like, I was like, man, she's beautiful. Like, she's gorgeous. And I was like, who's that? And my mom was like, that's her. Like, you, you need to go meet her. So I was like, I'm not going to go meet her. I'll just go meet her family. Like, just say hello to everybody around. And, like, if she's right there, I'll say hi. Um, and sure enough, like, we were to go say hi to everybody. I shook her hand. And they were like, you should go talk to her. And I'm just like, I'm not going to go talk to her. Like, I'm just hanging out. Like, it's, it's fine. Well, she comes and talks to me. Oh, and she brings. She's like, "Hey, do you want to take a shot?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. Like, let's do it." Those were the first so like, words out of her mouth. Oh, it was nice to meet you. When when I met her, she's like, "Oh, hi, I'm I'm Marky. Nice to meet you." And then like went around, I came back, and she like, I guess I, she probably thought I was shy and didn't want to go talk to her because the way she approached me, she was like, "What's he shy about?" Like, I felt like she thought I was shy, and I was like. Oh. And so, like, the first look I got at her, like, of her, of her eyes and her face was, like, when I shook her hand and I was like, yo, this girl's gorgeous. Like, beautiful eyes, beautiful face, just beautiful in general. And um, then she came up to me and she's like, hey, do you want to, like, take a shot or something? I was like, yeah, sure. And so we took a shot and we just started talking a little bit, like, nothing too crazy. Finally, I was like, hey, like, let's we want to take another one? She's like, yeah, sure. I think we took, like... I think we took a fireball shot and then we took like a, a shot of like hypnotic or something like that. Like whatever was there. Yeah. Terrible. I, I was not a fan of fireball either, but I did it for her. Uh -huh. I did it for her, Chris. I did it for her. And then uh, we took a shot of hypnotic and then like, sure enough, like the night ended, I went home, she went home. And then I, I, just, I shot her a message on Instagram. It's like, Hey, it was nice to meet you. And then, you know, she sent me a little message back and then we kind of just like, I think I was getting ready to go to spring training. So kind of like away from each other. Let me see October or I was going. Yeah. So like we kind of just went our separate ways and then we finally like it was getting close to the end of the off season. And she was like, Hey, my, my uncle or my brother-in-law has season tickets to the Spurs. I'm a huge Spurs fan. Mm -hmm a huge San Antonio Spurs fan. And I think she found out from somebody. I think that's why she invited me to the game. Mm. But we had been talking before, and she's like, hey, do you want to go to the Spurs game with me? I was like, yeah. It's like, I'd love to. I think the Spurs are playing the Timberwolves. They beat them. So right there, that was a good start. Um, so, yeah, and then ever since then, you know, she's uh, she's got me. Good for you guys. When's the baby due? Yeah. Uh, September 14th. No, oh, right before the postseason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully we're, we're locked in. We're good to go. And, and, you know, the baby, baby gets here and gets to enjoy himself some, some playoff baseball in New York. Nice. Nice. Second, second son, huh? That's what we're having. Second son. Yeah. Okay. I would, I mean, we were like dead set on a girl. We we're like, we're having a girl. We know we're having a girl. Like we have to be having a girl. We had name picked out and everything. Oh. Wow. Like, and right now, like, we're struggling with boy names. There's Chris is a good name, there. though. Chris is a good go, name. Don't go with Jake or Jimmy, please. Because then it'll be <laughs> – that'll be just too much for our organization. I got to be honest I might, with you. I might just go Jake, Jimmy, Trevino. Oh. Then we're all screwed. Yeah. You, then we're all – Then all we're all up. in trouble. And then we're, I, I'm, well, trying to, I'm trying to get her to agree to Jeter. But I don't know if that's gonna be maybe Pass. maybe in the middle. Maybe middle name. We'll see. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Have you even met him? 
No, not yet. Uh, I, uh, yeah, don't, yeah, that's, you, you, you saw the smile on my face without Rapujols, just, oh man. I actually recently just bought a pair of, uh, of, of Jordans, like the pinstripe Jordans, the ones, the Jeters. Uh-huh. Yeah, I just bought a pair of those because I'm not going to wear them, but I'm hoping that, like, when I meet him, he can sign them for me. Like, he's, I, I heard he's a good dude. I'm, and I, I'd probably just want to sit around him for like three hours and just pick his brain about everything. If you just yeah. worked for an organization that had an in with them. I know, right? How about you that? Know? Well, I could set you up with Miguel Rojas and he could probably get you his number and we can make things happen here on the Rose Rotation. Miguel Rojas, like the Oprah dude, show. Dude, great shoe game. Great shoe game. Oh, Miggy Rowe? Unbelievable shoe game. Best ever. Yeah. And Unbelievable shoe game. Like the nicest human being you've ever met. Yeah. Just yeah, I, I'm a, a I'm a fan of his. I saw his his walk off hit the other day. His mom's birthday or something like that. That was really cool. Like that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, he's yeah, it's good stuff. He's he's been dealing yeah. with a lot. He lost his he lost his uh, mom and he lost his grandpa within oh, a week man. of one another. It's tough, I believe. It's tough. It was. Yeah. So, but he is a good person. He will be back on the Rose rotation soon. This was a blast. I love catching up yeah. with you. You're a good guy. You've always yeah. been fun. You've always got a great way about you, and you're having a hell of a year. So I'm happy for you. Appreciate it. Please wish Josiah a happy fourth birthday for me. Okay? I will. Can't yeah. wait for the Sonic birthday. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Tell your wife to continue to feel well. And we can't wait to meet uh, little baby Trevino, unnamed at this point, in September. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And we'll see you around the office. And um, keep doing your thing, man. You're you're a good guy. For sure. Special shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the one and only Robbie Scirocco, our summer intern, Olden Stone, as well. For Jose Trevino, I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.